Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing a quick video for the Waste Oil Burner book. Um, one of the things about some of these contraptions I build is the ignition process. I've been testing out some different ways of doing that. What we have right here is the silicon nitride electric igniter. This is not the silicon carbide. The silicon carbide gives you a limited amount of ignitions. This is said to be more robust. And the reason I like this over most is that it's just a straight up 120 volt piece of equipment. You don't gotta buy any extra electronics to run this. It doesn't need a high voltage system. A uh, high voltage is expensive. You gotta have high voltage wiring and all that. So I have a switch and I have this bad dude plugged directly in. What is up with this bass awkward switch? Oh, I see. I gotcha. It's rocks that way. Now it's on. So this is what we get. We're pushing about 212 amps, or pushing about 200 and some watts there. The wattage is going down as it gets hotter. I don't know how long this thing can handle this. I would imagine it wouldn't need much more than that. Kind of a neat little contraption. I can see a guy doing a lot with one of these. There are so many applications for something like this. And the fact that it's just straight up 120 volts, it's definitely going in the book. So today, we're gonna mount this bad dude on this jet engine combustion system. Not quite done building it yet. We have an ignition port on the top of this thing. So that pretty much concludes that. Just see it one more time, how much of a response time we've got here before this thing's igniting stuff. And I'd say about right there, we ought to be igniting some diesel fume. So this should be a lot hotter. I don't think this would be too good on waste oil and stuff like that, I don't know yet. This is probably gonna get a bunch of crap built up on it. That's what I'm worried about is residue building up on there. That happens to the spark plugs too. It's almost like the coils are the best way to go. This is potassium hydroxide and sodium silicate. This is a pyro formula for the water glass. This is what they used at the Los Alamos Nuclear Laboratory when they were doing some work with uh, smelting plutonium and stuff like that. And this is one micron aluminum oxide powder and I'm making a high temp paste here. And we're gonna glue this silicon nitride igniter onto this uh, stainless steel end cap. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing this is a while back I built a machine that had a spark plug ignition system on it and the spark plug became fouled out. As we can see here, this thing lights the diesel fuel up very easily. I would presume it would do the same for waste oil. And the thing I like about the silicon nitride is the fact that if it does become fouled during use, all we got to do is burn the fouling off of there. This thing gets hot. So I could see where even if there was, if it was covered completely in carbon, no big deal. We got more charcoal for the fire, man. So I'm really digging this setup far more than the electric spark, not to mention the electronics required. As I said, are like an extra 50 bucks just for the transformer. This is nothing more than plugging a plug or turning on a switch directly to 120 volts. Now, the silicon carbide is another option, but they're saying those are far too brittle. Uh, the reason why I'm not using the diesel engine glow plug is simple. They require 12 volts, so that's an extra piece of hardware. Silicon nitride. So, I did order a couple of glow plugs for future experimentation, but I don't see myself using them. I'm trying to do this in a way that requires the least amount of parts. And I'm just like, man. Look at that. We, we uh, pretty much uh, just need to put a Man, delay off timer right on this thing so no one forgets to turn it off. Here's on full blast. All those sparks that you see is just metal filings from the fabrication process being shot out of there. This, the fact that you can turn the blower up full blast and it don't go out speed volumes, pretty impressed with that. And because uh, air is a very low specific heat. It's not a very good 
conveyor of energy. So you would want a blower that can produce a lot of hot air versus just a little bit. If you're using this thing to heat something up. So we're at about 255 PSI, 260 there. This thing can go anywhere from about 100 PSI all the way up. I think I got it up to like 1,000 PSI earlier. I did not get that on video, I don't think, because I'm not seeing it here in editing, but I know I did it. Well, I got it on video. I just haven't dug it up. When I do these experiments, there's sometimes a couple hours of footage, and I just can't be bothered to go through and pick all the cherries out. If we got enough for one basket, we're out of here, man. So good luck, fellas. Thanks for buying the book.